Well, it's great to be with our Celebrating Act 2 audience and uh, just always a wonderful, wonderful special guest, Stephen Campbell, the Brain Whisperer. How are you doing, well, Steve? Good. I'm doing great. Thank you. Steve, uh, great. It, it's great to see you and you have become a multimedia star. <laughs> um, obviously, you've been doing uh, your brain whispering for uh, a, close to a decade, but uh, mm. I was surprised to see on your website that you have a, your own radio show. Yeah. How did that um, happen? Well, it's really interesting. I never really expected anything like this to happen. I spoke, I taught this stuff in, in a college for about 20 years, I mean, various colleges. Back in, 19, in 2008, I was not only teaching, I was also the evening dean, and my wife sat me down. She said, okay, um, you're 61, your dad died at 62, you're working 14 hours a day. If you die early, I'll kill you. <laughs> I don't want to be a widow for 40 years like your mom's going to be. And my dad was very young when he died. So I said, okay. So I, I retired. But this wonderful message was so powerful, I began sharing it with senior centers and hospitals and drug places and all this sort of stuff. And then people began asking me to interview on their radio programs. And I said, wow, okay. And so I go into these stations and I interview at all the radio programs. And this one place in Occidental called Cows, K-O-W-S, uh, called and they said we'd like for you to interview here and I said great so I did and then they said we want you back again so they wanted me so I did again then again and then again finally the manager said you know what Steve you should have your own program and we wanted to put you right smack dab in the middle of the week from 9 to 11 on Wednesday so people can hear you right smack dab in the week and we want you to talk about what you've been talking about all these years. Now, this is around 12 years ago. So I said, wow, okay. And so they didn't really have anyone to uh, train you except for a couple hours. So I showed up at their station in Occidental and uh, they spent about an hour and a half training with me. And that's when I began doing it. I made a lot of mistakes over the years but I'm getting really good at it because you go in there, you have all these buttons and all these sorts of things. And lo and behold, I really began enjoying it. It's just really fun. And then I began meeting, well, for years and years, I've been meeting the most fascinating people, doctors, lawyers, psychologists, psychiatrists, all these sorts of things who all think differently. And I began asking them to be on my program. And they said, wow. So oftentimes they would actually drive to Occidental and sit in front of me and I would interview them. Well, now you can do it over the phone. And so over the last 12 years, I've been doing interviews from people who think differently. And I've been putting those interviews on my website, which is stephenrcampbell.com. And then type, just click on radios and you can see the, 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 uh, the faces and um, some marketing and the actual interviews. And there's dozens of dozens of interviews that I've been doing over the years, okay? What's the theme? The theme is based on my book, Making Your Mind Magnificent. The original title of my book was Making Your Mind Your Mentor, but my publisher said, nobody knows what a mentor is. So let's call it Making Your Mind Your Magnificent. I like my title better. Why? What is a mentor? A mentor is someone who sees more in you than you see in yourself. Let me go back and say that again. Really important. A mentor is someone who sees more in you than you see in yourself. Well, let's go back to my own life. I was one of six siblings, Shirley, Sally, Steve, Susie, Scott, Skip. And my father was a physician, incredibly intelligent. I was his only son till he had his other two sons when I was 17 years old. As you know, 
girls develop far quicker than boys do. And I was no exception. And my father, who loved me very much, could not understand why his son was not developing as quickly as his daughters were. And that really bugged him. And he couldn't understand it. And he treated me unconsciously as not very smart. And he did that for many years. And of course, I was convinced of the same thing for 40 years. And although my father and I were very close, he was a very, very loving person. He communicated some things to me that were not exactly true and not really healthy. So for 40 years, I thought I was really dumb and not good for anything, especially in the area of math. It turns out that I was wrong. A lot of us are wrong about what we say to ourselves about ourselves, and I was myself. Did I get stuck with that? No, I began to study in psychology on my own. And I began realizing that I can replace the messages I have been giving myself with positive messages. And I not only discovered that, I discovered that my brain would accept those messages without question. No arguments. And then I discovered that you keep replacing those messages and your brain rewires itself. And over time, those messages became a part of the way I saw myself. They became a part of the way I think. And lo and behold, I discovered, oh my gosh, I'm really smart. This is amazing. And I begin writing books and then other books. Then I began teaching courses in universities, Sonoma State, USF. And I discovered that I'm really, really good at this. And math is really easy. And every single time I discovered these new things, I discovered how amazing I am. What I've learned in working with people over the years is that that can happen, ready, to anybody. Let me say that again. That can happen to anybody. Where does it start? It starts with a decision. A decision to say, I am not going to let those negative messages be a part of the way I think. I'm just not going to allow it. And my brain said, okay, is it true? Brain doesn't even care. And I began seeing lives change, starting with my wife, with my children, with people around me, with people in hospitals, with drug addicts. And lo and behold, people began wanting to know about this on radio programs to the point where I now have my own. So the station for which I work is really, really cute. It's all volunteers. No one gets paid. So we have no idea who's listening to us. We can't. The antenna is tied to a tree in Sebastopol. I'm sorry, Occidental. <laughs> tied to a tree. Yeah, tied to a tree in Occidental. But you know what? It's a station with 80 volunteers, all of whom have a passion for what they are saying. And that's really the only thing that's really necessary. So what's my passion? Simply this, ready? Dear listener, your brain believing what you tell it about yourself, especially. Your feelings about yourself are coming from what you are saying. What cognitive psychology has learned 
back in the 1960s, beginning then, is that we can replace those messages with positive ones. And your brain believes them without question, no arguments. The people that I've interviewed over the years have seen that to be incredibly true in their lives, be they physicians, psychologists, doctors, it doesn't matter. They've all seen the same thing over and over and over. So if you would like to see and hear the interviews, they're all recorded on my website, which is stephenrcampbell.com. Let me spell that for you. S-T-E-V-E-N-R Campbell C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L dot com. And then go to radio show. And you can listen to those interviews anytime you want. Well, I have to tell you that in, in our industry, uh, when uh, somebody's on the radio only, uh, we say, well, of course, they have a face for radio. Uh, but in your case, you actually have a face for TV and for oh. pub public. Okay, the fact that you also have a voice for radio is like reverse engineering. And you yeah. know why you know why you do? I bet it's because you said to yourself that you can do that. Yeah. That you are yeah. you are able to do that. Yeah. Starts with started with that. Every starts with what's 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 going on up there. Yeah. Perfect. Well it's a wonderful radio show, Steve. And uh it's an interesting format because you do more than just talk to people. You really yeah, yeah. create a mood. Yeah. Music and is a very much a part of it. Music, music does things to the brain which no other entity does. Right. Music is mathematical. It also touches your feelings. So I can be driving down the road and just begin sobbing as I listen to a song because it touches things in your heart. Sure. So the music that I choose for my program has to be really mellow and wonderful to hear. So it's Peter, Paul and Mary, Joan Baez, John Denver, uh, Willie Nelson, um, music that just, that just makes you feel good and comforting and encouraging. Sure, and songs with a message. Yes. Yeah. And I think we'll leave people again with the with the uh, understanding that if you want to binge listen to uh, Steve, Stephen Campbell's radio show, go to stephenrcampbell.com. And if you want to binge watch the one, many fabulous interviews uh, that we've done with uh, Stephen uh, over the last year or two, you can go to Celebrating the Act 2, the number 2, on right. YouTube, okay, or even our website, and there's a contributors page, and all of these episodes are there. So whether you are driving and you can't binge watch anything, but you can binge listen, or you're uh, uh, at home and you're saying, oh my, let's go and binge watch, let's get some popcorn, and we can go binge watch Stephen R. Campbell. Now you can listen to you or just watch you or do both. That's right. That's and right. we can buy his book. My yeah. book, yes. Buy my book, yeah. Stephen, or thanks so I, much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And by much the way, congratulations me. on being a multimedia star. Yeah. Who would have known? Know? <laughs> you know, who would, you would have known if you yeah. had just said it to yourself earlier. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll oh. see you soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.